correct order for your glucose levels is first the vegetables, so the broccoli, second the protein and the fat, so in this case the eggs, and then third the starches. And if you eat your food in this order versus eating it in no particular order, you're able to cut, to reduce the glucose spike of the meal by 75%. Oh, I'll ask you right out the gate, should I be eating at 9 p.m.? Well, you can if you want. Um, it's better not to eat too late because what happens is if you have dinner and if that dinner spikes your glucose levels, then you're not going to have a very restful sleep and you're going to wake up feeling a bit hungover because of the glucose spikes throughout the night. And that's one of the first things I discovered about myself when I dove into the glucose world. And now I know how to wake up feeling awesome. No dinner spike. No dinner spike. That's the solution, everyone. I, I love that we went right out the gate and it's one of the first things you discovered about yourself. Uh, I notice if I eat past 8.30, definitely 9 o'clock, uh, I wake up throughout the night multiple times and I'm hot. It, it's like clockwork, so I make sure that I'm eating earlier, like 7.30, the latest, no, no, no further than that. Um, and I, I know people are different, but I just, right out the gate, I needed to know this. This is a question that's been itching on me. Nice. Yeah, it's interesting. I wonder if you're waking up hot because of glucose spikes and drops. Many people have different symptoms, you know, for them. So it could be. Very well could be. Well, it could be. All right. So let me ask you a question. You're a biochemist. At what point did you say, I'm so fascinated with blood sugar and its role in health and healing that I just want to put it out to the world? You know, I actually didn't decide. It kind of happened to me. Let me explain. So my, my health journey started when I was 19. And before the age of 19, I was a very, you know, innocent teenager and I thought I would never die and I was invincible. But then I had this accident. I actually broke my back jumping off a waterfall. Freak accident. Whoa. Had very intense, yeah, had very intense surgery. I have a bunch of hardware on my spine now. And then I suffered a huge amount, physically first, but then psychologically, I had a lot of mental health troubles because of the accident and the surgery. And so at the age of 19, Dr. G, I was in a situation where I felt really awful. I didn't really want to live anymore. Like things were bad. So I realized that actually, if I don't have my health, I have nothing. And I was forced onto this journey, onto this path of trying to heal myself from within. I had, I had to figure out how to communicate with my body. I had to figure out what I could do to wake up and feel good. That was my number one priority. So I shifted my entire focus. Um, I had studied mathematics in undergrad and I decided at that point, I'm gonna go to grad school and study biochemistry. So I did that to learn how the human body works, you know, from a, on a molecular cellular level. And then once that was done, I thought, hey, genetics seems to be the place where the most innovation is happening. And I had a hunch that genetics could help me understand how to feel good. So then I moved to San Francisco to work in the field of genetics for five years. And genetics didn't really help me f fix, heal myself. It was interesting, but genetics wasn't really the answer. And while I was there, while I was at 23andMe, the startup in Silicon Valley, this magical thing happened um, with huge consequences, and I didn't know back then. We started this pilot study internally at the startup, and the study was on continuous glucose monitors. And they had set up this thing where five employees could test out a glucose monitor just to see what it was like just to pilot new technologies because we were always looking for new stuff. And this was the beginning of the glucose journey for me. Mm. I put on the glucose monitor and then I was able to see on my phone what was happening underneath my skin. I started having this communication channel open between me and my biology. I would see these spikes and these dips and these roller coasters and... It was like, you know those light bulb moments when you see in yeah, the cartoons? For sure. It was like that for me. I was like, oh my God, I can finally speak with my body. I can finally speak with this thing that was a black box for so long for me. So I went down that path and I started to understand how my body functioned. I actually linked glucose spikes to worsening mental health for me. I was able to see spikes make me feel worse mentally. 
And so I learned to flatten my glucose curves. I saw from all the science that I reviewed that the objective is to flatten our glucose curves. And when we do that, so many things fall into place from cravings to sleep to energy, mood, fertility, weight gain, skin, aging, long-term prevention. I mean, you know the deal. Like many, many things fall into place when you get that lever in the right position. So... I healed. I was able to distill from the scientific papers all these hacks that allowed me to keep my glucose levels steady while still eating everything I loved. And so I was able to, to heal myself. And then I shared this with my family and my friends. And they healed as well. And then they were like, hey, girl, can you put this online? Because we want to share with more people. So I went on my Instagram app and I created a new Instagram account. And I started putting my work on there. And then... The rest is history. You know, it grew way beyond anything I could have imagined. What's fascinating to me is the series of events, right? It was like we have to go through this process of whatever darkness, whether it's you, your back injury that really caused a lot of dips and lows in your life, to come out to have this aha moment of discovery where you said the analogy of a light bulb like in the cartoons, right? And that led you to a higher purpose that is giving back to humanity. Because in many ways, it's so hard because, yeah, because when you're in it, it feels so dark and you don't know what the higher purpose is going to be. And it's so challenging to just keep going. And uh, it was truly a trying journey. I mean, I know we all go through very difficult times, but man, when you're in those times, like, you feel like it's never going to end. It's really tough. It's really tough. I completely agree. I know that side of the coin, right? But mm-hmm. in many ways, it's it's a side of a coin because you need that to come back in the way that we do with our own inherent light for humanity. And you think about it, you know, only one person can change their perspective of blood glucose and you can save their life literally long term if they just make that one intervention of controlling their glucose, preventing diabetes yes. and cancer and other chronic diseases. So amazing how... You listen to that aha moment and you follow that sense of purpose. And I think the commonality I'm finding at every guest who comes on the show has a moment in their life where they go, I think I'm going to follow this because it's going to change everything that I believed in my path in life. And then it becomes bigger than them. And that's how it should be. That's what our gifts are to humanity. So anyway. Exactly. um, And I really believe in following something that makes your soul light up because I think that's the universe telling you, this is where the gift is. Mm. This is what you're supposed to be doing. That's the purpose. Following that little voice, mm-hmm. whether it's you know wanting to be an actor or wanting to design clothes or wanting to yeah. make glucose graphs, <laughs> whatever it is. That yeah, exactly. You up. <laughs> and being sensitive to knowing, because for me, it's like if I'm writing, uh, acting in front of a camera, I'm I'm lit up. Time doesn't even exist. You know, it's like even if I don't sleep, I get a burst of energy. So for, for people, it has to be recognizing where your gifts are and what, what is being put in front of you by the universe or whatever, however you, your perspective is, and then just following that. So um, I love it. I love it. Sense of purpose. That's the big thing. Well, I'm happy you followed it, and many of us are. Hey, everyone. I want to talk to you about Birch Living. This is a partner that we've been working with for quite some time now. I know you heard it a lot on all of these shows, but it's because it's such a quality company. Now, sleep is so, so important to me and should be to you. Sleep is a pillar for your health. You sleep crappy, you feel crappy the next day. You feel crappy, you stay up late, you don't get good sleep, and it keeps going in a cycle. So, Birch is a premium mattress in a box company. It makes mattresses and sleep products that are stylish, comfortable, and environmentally conscious. Their organic, non-toxic mattresses are made right here in the United States. And recently, they introduced the Birch Lux Natural Mattress. This is an upgrade from their original well-loved Birch Natural Mattress. The Birch Lux takes comfort, luxury, and safety to the next level. It's handcrafted with responsibly sourced and sustainably produced materials like organic cashmere, organic New Zealand wool, fair trade cotton, and 100% natural latex. Now, it's got eight different layers. The Lux was specially created with breathability and support in mind. Very important for all those people who heat up in bed and need that airflow. The natural materials also allow for an increase in the airflow to keep you cool and comfortable throughout the night. Super important. Why? Because the cooler you are at night, the better you sleep. And then the natural non-toxic latex relieves pressure points, while the targeted zone lumbar support provides enhanced contouring. Really important for you to sleep well, and you're not tossing and turning when you have too much pressure in each of your muscles. 
The mattress has over 1,000 individually wrapped steel coils. It'll cradle your body and limit motion transfer. The Birch Lux mattress has several third-party certifications. It is GOT certified organic, Green Guard Gold certified, Fair Trade certified, Wool Integrity and ZTM, and Forest Steward Council certified. Now I've had my Birch for about six months now. It's the best bed I've had, period. Done a lot of stories on it. Uh, they've been a partner for quite a while. I sleep well, I sleep cool, I sleep deeply, I wake up rejuvenated. Sleep has been the issue that I've had for many years because I tend to stay up late and I tend to be a light sleeper. But Birch has definitely been part of the formula that's been helping me sleep better. So with your Birch mattress, you're gonna get a 100 night sleep trial along with a 25 year warranty. 25 year warranty. If it makes you nervous to buy something that you haven't tried, you get more than three months to make sure you love it. If you don't, they're gonna come and pick it up for you and you'll get a full refund. The best part about this, Birch delivers your mattress right to your door for free within the United States. It comes rolled up in a box and is super easy to set up yourself. I love my Birch mattress. I'm pretty confident you're gonna too. If you're looking for a new bed, check out Birch. You can click on the link below or go to birchliving.com slash heal thyself and you're gonna get $400 off of your mattress plus two free pillows. One of my newest partners, but one of my favorite companies out there right now is Higher Dose. Higher Dose has an awesome infrared therapy line. I've spoken about infrared for so many years and the benefits to our health. When you experience the powerful benefits of infrared with Higher Dose's portable infrared sauna blanket, you're gonna feel the difference in one session, right? You're gonna feel your blood flowing. You're gonna feel better, faster recovery. You might even have better sleep that night. What I find is I have a calmer nervous system when I'm getting out of the blanket. Plus, it naturally releases a dose of happy chemicals in the brain that's keeping you feeling euphoric. If you don't have the budget or the room for a full-size sauna, the blanket is really helpful and pays for itself in a few sessions. It's a game changer. For those of you who want to experience the benefits of infrared without all the sweat, they also have a device which is new in my home, which I've been using almost every single day as I've been doing my own personal detox, is an infrared PEMF mat, and it comes in two sizes. It's combined with a powerful technology of infrared and PMF that creates a space for a recharging experience. Now, PEMF stands for Pulse Electromagnetic Field. The therapy is FDA approved, as safe and effective. There's many studies out there showing that these electromagnetic waves have an affinity for different parts of the body that need the most healing. So it begins to work with the body's own recovery process, the most holistic way of healing, right? Working with the body. So you're gonna feel relaxed, grounded, and rebalanced. These mats are built with a thick layer of 100% natural purple amethyst crystal in mesh fabric tubes across the entire mat. The smaller mat fits comfortably in an office chair, so you can recharge while you're working. And the regular size mat is great for stretching or yoga. The way I use it is meditating or just hanging out and watching TV, I lay down. Whether you deal with chronic pain, work out frequently and need to recover, or just need to balance your nervous system and relax, lying on these mats, even a couple minutes a day, will help ease your body and your mind. And the way that I do it personally for the infrared sauna blanket, I utilize it a lot of the time when I'm outside of the house or traveling. It's a really important way that I can stay on my detoxification. The way I utilize a PMF mat is I lay down every single night before bed. I put it on the lowest setting to wind down from the day and relax my nervous system. I find both have been incredible for me feeling more energy throughout the day. The number one thing that I felt is energy. So get your own infrared sauna blanket or your infrared PMF mat at higherdose.com. It's the best one out there. I did all the research. This is the best of the best, the best bang for the buck that you're going to get. The promo code is DRG15 at checkout. You're going to get 15% off site-wide. That's higherdose.com and the exclusive promo code is DRG15 or go to higherdose.com slash heal thyself. What was your motivation to all of it, to do it a little differently? Because you have your whole, almost, I would say 80% of your page is graphs that are showing and depicting the, the contrast, what made you lean towards there? Because I still to this day mm. haven't seen many people put graphs up about anything. <laughs> so when I first discovered glucose and I was learning all the science, in order to heal myself, I was able to just distill and summarize the evidence that I was finding, like how to eat your foods in the right order, how to use vinegar, how you should be walking after meals, etc. And I just applied it to my life and it worked. But then when I wanted to talk to my friends and family about it, what I first did is I printed out the scientific papers, like the scientific paper that says, mm. if you eat your food in the right order, you cut the glucose spike by 75%. So I printed the paper 
And I gave it to my friends who were scientists. And I was like, guys, look, this paper, like eat your food in the right order. You're going to feel amazing. Your energy is going to be fantastic. You're going to heal your body. And the response was crickets. Nobody cared. They were like, mm, I don't want to read this paper. Like, I don't have time. You know, it, it wasn't... It wasn't connecting. People were not being engaged in the topic. So I thought mm -hmm. to myself, I need to make this compelling. I need to make this interesting. I need to catch people's attention because this information is so valuable. So I thought, what if I used data from my own glucose monitor to illustrate these scientific papers? So for example, for the eating your food in the right order scientific discovery, I thought, I'm going to eat the same meal, once in the right order, once in the wrong order, and compare the two spikes, and then show that to people. So that was my plan, and I had to, I had to actually build this software to make the graphs, because the app that the Glucose Monitor came with did not make pretty graphs. So I made this mm. hacky thing on my computer, and then I showed that to my friends. And then they got interested. They were like, oh, mm -hmm. I see. You know, the human mind is, is very visual. Yeah. So as soon as they could yeah. see big spike for this, small spike for this, they got it. And then they engaged. And I thought to myself, hmm, you see, mm -hmm. I've solved the communication problem. And that was really my contribution at the very beginning. It was just illustrating the science in a way that felt fun and stylish and interesting and, you know, pop culture-y. And that's really what changed the game. It's super. For me, I was like, oh my God, the visuals, the visuals, the visuals. I was like, I knew it. I was like, I knew it. If you do this with this, it's like this. But if you do this alone, it's like this. I was like, it makes sense. Just all humans want something quick, digestible, and pretty. You know, yeah. something that we're like, oh my, this is nice to my eyes, but it has information. And actually, I'm going to remember it. Me being a visual person, I mean, it's literally how I got through school. I would draw pictures. I, I still remember like pictures of some of the graphs that you've had. You know, I see like yes. wine and cheese or just cheese alone or, you know, it's like, yes. it's, that's, that's, the, that's the magic of it. And um, so and I know a lot of people have taken well to it also, um, just seeing yes, the spikes and actually, of like. Yes, I went a step even further. So, you know, on my Instagram, the graphs are made by my computer. But then in Glucose Revolution, in my book, I worked with an illustrator and we turned all the graphs into these beautiful hand-drawn images. And they are just mm amazing 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 and it really opens in my your mind book. to yeah, yeah yeah in the book in the book okay. there all the graphs are there and new graphs too but they're all illustrated by hand and it's just it's just stunning it's amazing to me how many times you can how many different ways you can use to illustrate science and it can be on many yeah. different mediums so many different artists artistic yeah. uh, directions it's really cool i love it so much so I, I'm in the process of writing a book and I spoke to uh, the team and I said, hey, number one thing, it's got to be visually, like I want visually stunning pictures and graphs. So we take yes. scientific concepts, right? Let's say the sun hitting your eye, what it does in, in, in your brain, how it affects your body. But let's make it like very straightforward, digestible and aesthetically pleasing. Amazing. I mean, that's, that's what we want. It breaks the book apart. No one wants to read mm -hmm. anymore page one to 300 that is text heavy. I don't remember things like that. You know, I got to draw it out. So thank you for putting that out in your book. I can't wait to re read your book. That's so exciting. Oh, it's coming soon. It's got, I'm not going to be able to write in 18 months like you, but, but <laughs> it's coming soon. Nice. So, let, so let me ask you a question. We, I, so I know you have some of the most amazing hacks for us. And, yes. and I want to know, uh, what you mentioned the, the eating in order. I yes. really want to make this clear to people. Is there an order that I have to eat my dinner plate or lunch plate or breakfast plate? So the science shows us that there is a, an optimal order in which to eat, eat the consistent of your meal. So the right order is, let's say you're in front of a meal right now. Look at what you have on your plate. Let's say you have broccoli, you have eggs, and you have potatoes, okay? So picture that, broccoli, eggs, potatoes. The correct order for your glucose levels is first the vegetables, so the broccoli, second the protein and the fat, so in this case the eggs, and then third the starches. And if you eat your food in this order versus eating it in no particular order, you're able to cut, to reduce the glucose spike of the meal by 75%, which is massive and leads to consequences such as not feeling sleepy after the meal, 
not creating a cravings roller coaster in your body, in your mind, not having any mood swings for the rest of the day, having steady energy, sleeping well that night, not increasing inflammation, not speeding up aging, and not increasing your risk of weight gain or long-term chronic diseases. So this is an incredibly simple change with far-reaching consequences on our body and our mind. Whoa. Can you, like, just to think, because for me, I've always been actually, almost, I think pretty much right when I read your uh, that part of the your Instagram, I go, whoa, I need to switch it up because I always had an affinity towards eating my potatoes really fast first or the rice or the beans. It's like we're drawn to the carbs first. And then I always ended up eating the, the greens uh, last. I actually thought about yesterday. We, I was at Air One and I got a combination plate and I had um, Brussels sprouts, like shredded Brussels sprouts. And then I had uh, some like um, chana masala, like some, some beans in there. And then I had some tofu. And uh, I, I, I went for the beans immediately to eat, like, like almost like within five seconds. And then I stopped and I go, wait a minute. No, 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 no. Glucose guy is going to be on the show tomorrow. I need to go for the <laughs> Brussels sprouts. So I went there first, then the tofu, then the, um, the China masala. So nice. I, felt, uh, I felt good, you know. I, I, I'm, I'm particularly sensitive to the blood sugar, but I love that you're preaching that. And are, are a lot of people receptive to it? Or are more people like, whoa, I, like, I didn't know that. Are you, are you sure? Like, that's how it's got to be? People are very receptive, you know. So now I have a pretty big community on Instagram. And this is one of the simplest things to start with. And people report to me every day. I get messages. Like, I just changed the order in which I eat my food. And insert amazing thing here. So my period came back because I had PCOS or my acne cleared up or I finally was able to lo lose the few pounds that I had put on since menopause or just simply I feel really good and I feel reconnected to myself, which I think is incredible. I'm so happy to hear this. And the science shows us that yeah. this hack works in everybody. So people with and without diabetes, people of all ages, of all genders, um, and it works in everybody. It just has to do with the biochemistry of our body. It's very, it's a very powerful mm -hmm. principle. And it's just one of the principles um, that I summarized from the science. I love that. So, so my take on it is that is it the fiber from the greens reducing the spike from the starches that are coming later in the meal versus just all the starches overwhelming your body immediately on? Yes, absolutely. So if you if you were really hungry and your stomach was empty and you started by, as you might have done in the past, eating all the starches, starches break down to glucose. And so if there's nothing in your stomach, they arrive in your stomach, break down to glucose. Glucose really, really quickly makes its way through your stomach, your small intestine, and into your blood. Big delivery of glucose very quickly, big glucose spike, and all the consequences of it. Now, if you have vegetables first, Vegetables contain a lot of fiber, and fiber is incredible. It's an amazing substance. And what it does that is of interest to us here is that it comes down your stomach and your upper intestine, and then it coats the walls of your intestine with this sort of viscous mesh. And this viscous mesh protects us from any big dumping of glucose that arrives afterwards. So then the glucose from the starches Yes, it arrives in your intestine, but the mesh protects you from absorbing too much of it too quickly. You actually absorb less of it. So as a result, you're eating the exact same stuff, but your glucose levels look completely different. Mm, you know what? I don't think after this conversation, I will never not go for my greens first. Uh, thank you for that easy hack. It's literally yeah. just a decision that you make. Well, you got to bring greens on your plate first or, or vegetables on your plate, but it, it's an easy Any hack. Now, I, I will ask this. All the, any vegetables. So yes. what about carrots? Those are starchy. Is that also, mm -hmm. is that also considered uh, fibrous enough or are we talking about leafy greens? All vegetables work, carrots as well. So yes, carrots are a little bit starchy, but honestly, they're still a vegetable. They're not as starchy as pasta or rice, for example. So any vegetable under the sun, they can be raw, they can be cooked. Actually, you know, I would consider lentils and beans also in the category of fibrous vegetables. Yes, they are more on the starchy side, mm -hmm. but if you have no other options, it's still better to eat those before, let's say, I don't know, a big bowl of pasta or a lot of rice than to not do it. So yeah, anything that's a vegetable contains fiber and will help you and will coat your intestine in this way. 
So I want to know if you have a protein, carb, uh, and vegetable, uh, any, any vegetables on your plate, what's the percentage? What does it look like for you? I would say probably a third, a third, a third. I mean, I try to eat a lot of protein because um, most of us, especially women, under eat protein. You're supposed to eat one gram per pound of body weight per day, which is actually a lot more than you'd think. Um, so personally, yeah, protein... Quite a lot. I love carbs. I mean, I love pasta. I just had pasta for dinner before mm. this podcast. That's never something I want to ever get rid of in my life because it brings me so much joy. But I make mm. sure that I always have vegetables first. So, for example, for dinner, I had eggplant. So my green, my vegetables, my vegetable starter, what I started the meal with, was eggplant with tahini sauce, cauliflower uh, mm. with this cool vinaigrette. And then I had cod and then I had pasta. And that's how I roll, my, and well, I feel my amazing. Mouth is watering. I love that because so you you you've uh, negated the glucose spike mid uh, before the podcast. So now you have enough energy to show up with exactly because of the order that you went with. Exactly, but if I had eaten, let's say, the pasta first, I would be asleep right now. I would be like, yeah. Dr. G, I don't have any energy. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel amazing. And I'd be like, glucose I, you know, got her, got her, the glucose got her. <laughs> so yeah, this is, this is incredibly powerful, and it makes me feel good, and it makes other people feel good as well. And it, it allows us to not demonize anymore any food group. You know, carbs have had a bad rep, and before that it was fat, and Desar is a bad guy. And what I'm here to say is that you can eat a little bit of everything. You just have to learn how to eat it to minimize any potential negative consequences. Mm. There's a how versus really just the what's exactly. on the plate. More so it's the how you do it. Love yes. it. That is that is my favorite hack of all time. But there are some other hacks that you put up on your Instagram. I'm going to ask you, what is one of the most surprising things that you've learned on this journey of bringing uh, glu uh, glucose-heavy information, uh, balancing your blood sugar information? Are there, is there any combinations that you found where you're like, wow, that combination is more powerful than I thought? Or did you did you find that wow this one food spikes your blood sugar through the roof? I had I didn't even think that. I think the most surprising thing I discovered was actually that there is a miracle ingredient that sounds too good to be true that balances your glucose levels to an extent that I mean it's crazy. And that miracle ingredient is vinegar. And I'm a skeptic, you know, I'm a scientist. So somebody told me one day, oh, vinegar is really good for your glucose levels. So at first I didn't believe that. I was like, that sounds like another fad. But then I dove into the scientific research and it turned out, Dr. G, that there are dozens of randomized controlled trials, which is like the gold standard in, in scientific evidence, showing that just by incorporating vinegar into your daily habits in a specific way, you're able to curb all the glucose spikes of that day by up to 30% without changing what you're eating. And vinegar, if you add it in this particular way to your day, it has incredible consequences. It's been studied a lot in, in women who have hormonal issues like polycystic ovarian syndrome or infertility or in people with type 1 or type 2 diabetes. And the benefits, the improvements are drastic. Whoa, just vinegar we're talking about. Something I can go to the supermarket right now and get for $2.99 is going to make a big difference on my blood sugar, you're saying? Yes, and the vinegar, so the trick is you buy a bottle of vinegar, and it can be any type of vinegar, except balsamic, because that one has leftover sugars in it. My favorite is apple cider vinegar. Other people prefer white wine vinegar, rice vinegar. And the technique is before your meals, so I do it before lunch and dinner, you take a tall glass of water, and then inside of it, you add a tablespoon of the vinegar you just bought. And you drink this within 30 minutes of starting your meal. And then you have your meal as you usually would, and if you want to eat your food in the right order, that's even better. <laughs> Double hack. Mm -hmm. But the vinegar has an effect on our body. The effect it has is that it goes to your muscles, and it tells your muscles... Dr. G's muscles, please uptake glucose really, really quickly as it lands into the bloodstream. So as you're eating your meal, your muscles have been activated by the vinegar and they soak up, they get really thirsty for glucose and they soak it up as soon as it arrives in your bloodstream. As a result, it doesn't accumulate in your blood and there's no glucose spike. Well, there's a smaller glucose spike and your muscles are turning this glucose into stored energy. 
So the glucose, instead of going to your fat cells, which is where it ends up if there's too much hanging around, it actually gets stored into your muscles for later use as energy. And, you know, that's what happens immediately. But us as humans, when our glucose spikes are lowered, we feel better. I mean, if you start applying these hacks today, you will feel better in a few hours. The effects are immediate because glucose is so tightly correlated to our mental state. Mm. I, and I, I love that, that you, you mean to tell me a tablespoon of, glu- uh, of, of vinegar can reduce your blood glucose just pre-meal. Yeah. Very easy intervention that we can do. Is it, you said, a cup of water or f- is there an amount of water or can, we, can, we, can I take it straight? Can I take a shot of it? Is there a certain way or will the water dilute it? So it's best not to take it straight just because vinegar can be a bit damaging to your teeth. Um, so I recommend mm-hmm. like a glass of water like this or a little bit bigger if you're starting out and you're not too sure about having a vinegar drink because it sounds kind of gross maybe. <laughs> so something, something taller mm-hmm. than this and then you put a tablespoon of vinegar in it. You can also just start off with less than a tablespoon. So when I first started out, I was putting a few drops Mm. in. And now I really love it. Like I crave the taste actually because, I don't know, it's just become something that I love. And I've tried all the different apple cider vinegars and I have my favorite apple cider vinegar from France, etc. So it became something that I really, really enjoy. But you can also, if you don't want to drink the vinegar water, you can make a sauce for your vegetables that has vinegar in it. So you can mix, you know, the Mm. vinegar with olive oil and salt and pepper and some spices, and then put that onto the vegetables you're having at the beginning of your meal. And it works the same. I love it. And vinegar is gonna help activate your stomach acid so Mm -hmm. you digest the food better. Yes. So that's a a, a two for one right there, blood sugar and stomach acid. So uh, I I know it helps me a lot. So I gotta get back on it and you've inspired me. Nice. Now, here's something that I love that you talk about movement uh, after eating, the importance for that on blood sugar. Mm-hmm. Um, can you explain to us what that looks like and, and, and how long we have to move for and, and really the, how much of an effect it has on our blood sugar? Mm-hmm. So I just mentioned that the way vinegar works is by telling your muscles to soak up more glucose. And it turns out that your muscles are actually your best ally when it comes to reducing glucose spikes. And the reason is every time your muscles contract, they need energy. And the most, the easiest place they find this energy is in glucose that's just floating around in your bloodstream. So if you've just eaten a meal and then you use your muscles for, let's say, 10 minutes, which is what I recommend and what people uh, incorporate into their lives, as your muscles are contracting and as the glucose is arriving in your bloodstream from that meal you just ate, the glucose is going to go to your muscles for energy instead of just sitting around and creating a big glucose spike and then creating a big glucose crash and then increasing inflammation and making you tired, et cetera, and all the downstream consequences. So the easiest way to think about this is after I finish eating, I'm going to move for 10 minutes within, you know, an hour of finishing the meal. And it can be anything. The top uh, favorite things to do in in my community online on Glucose Goddess are dance to your favorite songs, Uh, Empty the dishwasher, Mm. vacuum your apartment, go for a walk with your dog, or if you're watching a movie after dinner, for example, which I love doing, or a TV show, you can just invent whatever kind of movement routine in front of the TV. So you can start doing some squats, you can have a weight, some weights that you have next to your couch, and you can do some bicep curls as you're watching the movie, Uh, tricep dips, boat poses, I mean, ab bikes, like whatever you want. Anything works, which is why it's so incredible and so flexible. And so that's what I love about the hacks too, is that these are principles that you can apply however it makes sense for you in your own life, considering your own preferences, your own culture, where you live. Um, it's really up to your imagination. Just movement. Yes. Literally just movement within an hour. That's mm-hmm. all we need. And I, I've definitely been inspired. I go for a nice little walk around the block after every meal, or I'll, I'll take a call and make sure that like I eat right before and then I'm walking around. Yes. So it's you just make it happen in your day. And it's been so important for my overall well-being. So Let me ask you a, a question. What foods have you found that have had the the most dramatic spikes in blood sugar? Which, is there any? I know people are biochemically different, but is there any foods that you say, hey, I would actually really try to stay away from these if you're suffering? Fruit juice. It sounds healthy because it's made from fruit, 
But unfortunately, if you think about it, a Coca-Cola is a beetroot or a cane or a corn juice. I mean, the sugar in a Coca-Cola comes from plants too. And the sugar in an orange juice comes from an orange, but it's still the same amount of sugar. So fruit juice is just a concentrated glucose spike that's just going to send your glucose levels through the roof. So I would really highly recommend you completely avoid those. Or if you really must have fruit juice in your life because it makes you so happy, have it, but then go for a walk or have it after some vegetables. You know, think about it as something for pleasure that you're going to try to mitigate with some of the hacks, not something that's going to help you stay healthy. So that's that's a really big one. Another one that I've discovered, is, and this one has a bit more individual differences, it seems like, is oat milk. So a lot of people have coffee drinks mm, with oat milk. oat milk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because oats are a starch, their quote-unquote milk is actually just glucose that's been extracted from the plant. So in some people, it creates very big spikes. So if you don't really care for oat milk, switch to something else. You know, if you, if you can manage dairy, whole milk, or other nut milks that are made from nuts, um, or, yeah... But if you really love oat milk, because I know many of us do, again, think about it like this. Think about, okay, I'm going to have this oat milk latte, but as dessert after a full meal, or I'm going to have it and I'm going to put some clothes on it, which is one of the hacks I teach, which mm. is every time you have something starchy or sweet, make sure you add protein, fat, or fiber to it. So in the case of an oat latte, for example, you could have it alongside 10 almonds or a slice of cheese or a leftover piece of veggie from your fridge. And my favorite way to put clothes on carbs, for mm -hmm. example, is on chocolate cake, because I'm a big chocolate cake person. And I put Greek yogurt on it. And again, I know the cake is just there for my pleasure, but by adding the Greek yogurt, which is full of fat and protein, I'm smoothing out the glucose spike it would create. So these are all these hacks I, I teach people in, in Glucose Revolution, in the book, on my Instagram. It's like, these are all tools in your tool belt to figure out how to eat what mm. you love with fewer consequences. I love it. I love that, and I love that you mentioned dressing them up. Like mm -hmm. the, I've, I, uh, the amount of times I've seen nuts on your on your graphs is yeah. like, I love it because you can do that. It's so easy and accessible. Just a handful of nuts will make a difference in your blood sugar. Um, I'm so in awe of of all of these hacks, really, because. I wish that we had one class in med school that said, let's go over all the blood. It's, it's literally the blood sugar hack class. Yeah. But we haven't had that. We know about blood sugar. We learned about insulin, glucagon, all, all the other things that you learn in school. But the hacks that are applicable yeah. to teaching your patients or teaching the community is exactly what you've perfected. And I love it. The Glucose Revolution book is coming. And I'm very excited. I'm, I'm looking in the mail every single day for this book. <laughs> for your copy, and the I can't signed wait copy. To read it. <laughs> for my copy. I'm waiting for the signed copy. So you're in London. You got to expedite that ASAP it's because I really happening. need to read this. It's um, happening. When is it out? Um, and where can we find it? So it's out April 5th, uh, 2022, in America, in the US. And you can find it. The easiest place to get it is on Amazon if you order your books there or from your local bookstore. And the title is Glucose Revolution, The Life-Changing Power of Balancing Your Blood Sugar. Um, and I'm very excited Ooh. for it. And I've put so much love into it. And there are stories from dozens of people from the community. There are new hacks, new hacks than those that are on my Instagram. And I really hope that this becomes a tool for people, a reference that they keep coming back to and something that they give to any friend or family or acquaintance that's suffering because it will help them feel better. I'm 100% behind it. I, I know the role of glucose in acute disease uh, as degree, disease progresses and certainly in chronic disease. I used to work in oncology and glucose was one of the first things, blood sugar is one of the first things I spoke about. So the world needs this book. Where can people find you who, who have never heard of you and, and, and blessed enough to find you today? Where do we find you? Uh, do you have a website? We want to know all the, all the ways, all the resources. The best place is on Instagram because that's where the whole journey started. Uh, my Instagram is glucose goddess. <laughs> um, and then the website is glucose-revolution.com where you can get all the links to pre-order the book if you haven't found it yet. But um, yeah, I'm an Instagram girl. That's where it all started. 
<laughs> I love it. And and you're and you're active on it and you put up amazing stories and amazing posts. Everyone viewing and listening, go to the go to the page, follow it. It's an amazing, amazing one if you're not yet. Listen, I thank you for staying up late after your dinner <laughs> when you, I know that you love to watch your shows or your <laughs> movies, but certainly with movement. <laughs> and taking the time out to come on to heal thyself and, and spread some of the beautiful knowledge. I really appreciate you and I'm very excited for your book. You got it, Dr. G. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure to have um, such a, a wonderful host. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for the invitation. Awesome. I love it. And I'll see you soon, okay? Sounds good. Mm -hmm.